Before I give you the dua of today, <coughs> if you notice, the Akhwan, in this only few days, we had so many janazas. We had even janaza today after Asr, and we're also having janaza tomorrow after the first Jummah. Let me ask you a question. If we were told, I asked this question to my students yesterday, if we were told that tonight at midnight at 12, your life will end, guaranteed. Tonight is your last night. When the clock ticks 12, you're gone. From now till then, knowing that these are the last few hours on earth, what would you do? Riyadh, what would you do? Make a lot of salat. Make a lot of ibadah. Zulfuqar. A lot of istighfar. Ask my family for forgiveness. I would do all kinds of... Hmm? Give a lot of charity also. Every one of us will say something different, but it will all be in the spectrum of we will be doing a lot of ibadat because it's the last night. The follow-up question is, who told you that tonight is not your last night? Did Brother Nidal, when he prayed with us on Monday, Isha, did he know that it was his last night and 3.14 a.m. he left this dunya? So why we say, if I know that my time is up, I will do this, 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 and that. Who told you, who can dare raise his hand in this crowd and say, I guarantee you, I'm not dying tonight? So why are you not doing these things that you just said, I want to do? Knowing that, subhanAllah, you know, I was asking myself, what stronger message could there be for someone who was praying foot to foot to me? He was taken out. What, what else do I need to wake up? When someone from among us, the angel of death was here watching him, and he took him, and we still did not learn. And what are we waiting for? A text message? Or what are we waiting for to notice that this night could be my last night? What is it we're waiting for? What is it, ya akhwan? What is it? And he, it's not like, you know, when someone goes to the hospital and stays there for a week or 10 days and two weeks and three weeks, it, the impact will become much less, right, when they pass away. But when someone was foot to foot, Brother said, oh, he opened the door for me. One brother said, oh, mashallah, he, he told me that you're looking younger. Another brother said, he prayed right next to me. Another so one person who was literally with us and gone instantly in less than the next salat. What else do we need to wake up? There is something Rasulullah told us, Mawt al sudden death. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, it's a punishment for the wrongdoer and rahma lil mu'min, and a mercy to the believer, the sudden death. The dua of today, because we don't know when that time comes, so we want to ask Allah to give us a good end. We want to ask Allah to give us husn al-khatima. What is the dua for that? But before I teach myself and teach you the dua, let's define what does husn al-khatima mean? What does good end mean? Many people think that husn al-khatima, that a good end is to die in sujood. A good end to die with the Qur'an in your hand. A good end to die while I'm talking right now. A good end to die in the masjid. 
these are, are, these are all great, but did any of this happen to the best man ever created? He died on his mattress. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, the second best man, on his mattress, Khalid bin Walid, on his mattress. So we say, they did not have Husn al Khatima. What is Husn al Khatima? Husn al Khatima, a good end is to die when your heart is free of shirk, when your heart is free of hypocrisy, when your heart is free of hatred to anyone around you, when you are free from committing zulm and oppression to anybody, when you have left behind a wife and children that will make dua for you. That is Husn al Khatima. That is a good end. When you die as a muwahid, when you die as you and your parents are pleased with you, that is husn al-khatima. So what is the dua? Allahumma ahsin aqibatana fil umuri kulliha wa ajirna min khizzi dunya wa adhab al-akhirah. Beautiful dua. Of course, I can do the simple one. Allahumma rizuqni husn al-khatima. Balid. Excellent. Allahumma rizuqni. Ya Allah, bless me. Give me the rizq of husn al-khatima. But this one is literally said by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The hadith is in Musnad Ahmad. Allahumma ahsin aqibatana fil umuri kulliha wa ajirna min khizi dunya wa adhab al-akhira. Ya Allah, give me a great outcome in all my affairs. Outcome in my degree, a great outcome in my test, a great outcome in my marriage, and of course, a great outcome in my life. وَأَجِرْنِي and protect me from the disgrace of this dunya. Ya Allah, don't make me humiliated in this dunya. Don't make poverty humiliate me. Don't make the enemy humiliate me. Do not make the kuffar humiliate me. Protect me from humiliation in this dunya and disgrace, and protect me from the punishment of the akhirah subhanallah covers dunya and akhirah and yourself everything is covered in one statement i beg allah in this blessed night of friday this is one of the best nights ya akhwan again maybe this is our last friday night right so this is a blessed night beg allah in this night to give me and you and everyone who's watching us Husn al Khatima. Ya Allah, we beg you with the best of your names. Ya Allah, we beg you with the best of your names to give everyone who attended today and their spouses and their children and their parents Husn al Khatima. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. See you tomorrow at Fajr at 6.15, insha'Allah. Qad aflah al mu'minun. الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون والذين هم عن اللغو معرضون والذين هم للزكاة فاعلون والذين هم لفروجهم حافظون إلا على أزواجهم أو ما ملكت أيمانهم فإنهم غير ملوم